Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, you want to enjoy it. I'm now doing a timeline video for the series I did as Brazil on the 1812 scenario Napoleon's expedition on the Mega Mod version 5.9 of the Mega Mod of Rage of History 2. Um, yeah, this ended up being one of the longest games I think I've done yet, if not the longest. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get this thing started here. I had a very slow start to this game, mostly as a result of the fact that for some reason every single one of my provinces was population, every single one of my provinces was split between the state of Brazil, which I cur which is what I am, and the Empire of Brazil. So I had to go and do province building in every single one of my provinces at the beginning of the game, which is super annoying. And that really screwed me up early game, I feel like. But, um, yeah, Ottoman Empire already took over Egypt at this point, so yes. A few other things have kind of happened as well, I think. But, um, yeah. Overall, not tons happens throughout this game, I feel like. Gods, vassals, colonies, declaring independence, Austria, Ottoman Empire fighting each other over here now. And the Ottoman Empire wins that. Hmm, let's see. Spain and France set war with each other, and Morocco joins in right at the end. Getting basically the rest of Spain there, and all that's actually left of Spain is Cuba basically over there. So, yeah, and I think this bouts around when I finally managed to start doing stuff. Yeah. Basically, right when France stuck France's vassals in Europe, started declaring independence, and then the France getting defeated by Switzerland because they're a 200% defense bonus, is when I finally got around to doing stuff. Peru and Bolivia ended up at war with each other, basically, there, and I took advantage of that to fight them and take them both over. So, after that, I easily deal with Paraguay and then deal with Argentina and basically get South America fully under my control, but yeah, that still takes a while for me to get around to doing, because I'm still pretty weak. I mean, everything at this point. Russia and the Ottoman Empire just had a war with each other, and Russia ended up winning, taking basically the entirety of the Balkans. Vietnam has most of Southeast Asia under their control. Um, let's see... What else is going on here? Okay, dealt with Argentina. So after I dealt the province supposedly there, I basically go and just colonize all that. So another none of these other countries colonize anything down there. Tokugawa, Japan took over Vietnam for the most part. Um let's see. And then Japan ends up falling to Nanbu. Honestly, generally don't know how that happens, but it did. Seriously, how in the world did they get defeated by one of their vassals? <laughs> Over there. But yeah. And Switzerland now has that as well over here. I'm almost done colonizing all that stuff. Finally. Ah, da, 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 da. Okay, there we go. Going out to Colombia, there basically. So after that, I deal with Mexico twice because I had to fight in the fighting two wars with them because of shit. I'll mention that stuff later, I guess. Once that those wars actually start. Meanwhile, see what else is going on in the world, which really isn't much at all. Yeah. For some reason, most of the world is pretty calm throughout this game. Just a hand, just a few major wars, and that's it, to be honest. China taking over that stuff now. Getting a decent chunk of Southeast Asia under their control, at the very least. East India Company and China tore with each other, and I think, yeah, that's when I 
go and fight my first war with China, with Mexico over there. And of course, when that's taking everything up to Nicaragua, basically, China and Korea end up at war with each other, and China is apparently strong enough to actually defeat Korea still. So they managed to do that. Korea apparently had a decent amount of lands that they had colonized or something, I guess. But yeah, that war with Mexico there. I ended up getting them as a vassal afterwards. Which is the reason why I only took that much land, but... I would call it a bug, considering what happened shouldn't be possible, considering they're my vassal, but they end up accepting a deal with Oman to become their vassal, because that's one of the few nonsense things in this mod that's just weird, is when countries get reduced to very something like that there, and they end up start just going hell marions like alliances trying to get to larger countries to become their vassal for some reason and also forming a union and yeah mexico is accepting the vassal option for that so yeah that's quite a second tour with mexico got them as a vassal again and what do you guess happened again yeah they became oman's a vassal again which they, of course, immediately get independence because Mexico is so much stronger than Oman. Who has literally just that one single province up here. But, yeah. United States goes to... Mexico went to war with the United States there, actually. With... And they took over Spain there, got other stuff as well out of it, gave all that stuff in Canada to Britain in exchange for some other lands that I don't remember on the top of my head exactly what that land was, but I got it. Oh yeah, New Zealand over there, got that from Britain in exchange for that land. But yeah, finished off Mexico with a third war, because otherwise the United States would have defeated them. Russia and East India Company are now at war with each other, and honestly, I had absolutely no problem with that war going on over there, considering Russia and the East India Company were kind of two of the stronger countries in the world. Britain and Spain basically being the other two. And I guess also the United States, kind of. But yeah, that war ends up raging on for quite a while. And over here, I kind of started cleaning things up a little bit with my border with the United States and basically just buying all the lands back that was part of Mexico. Which takes a bit before I get all that done, but I eventually do it all. Morocco and the Ottoman Empire are toward each other, and along with the United States being in that war, so Morocco got more of Africa there, I guess. And United States to Greece and Eastern, Western bit of Turkey there, I guess. Yeah. I finished up that stuff, got all that land back over there. And at this point, I think the next thing I do is jump over here into Africa because I have that over there as a result of one of the countries I took over here or around here. So went after Morocco next. Let's deal with them. There we go. Got that done. They end up capitulating the very first turn. United States and Switzerland had a war with each other. United States of course loses because Switzerland's 200% defense bonus that makes it impossible to lose. Makes it impossible for them to really lose. And Switzerland only took Greece from the United States there. But yeah, I got that stuff, so I slowly start expanding more in Western Africa, basically, over here. And I think that stuff has happened over here. Yeah, Italy is at war with the East India Company now as well, which is what basically spells the end of the East India Company's war with Russia there. So, yeah, East India Company's basically been completely defeated, really, at this point. 
Russia also now has the southern half of Japan as well. And the little tribal nation that was up here apparently got the rest of Japan somehow. How in the world did that happen? Eh, whatever. Switzerland and Russia are now at war with each other. And yeah, of course Switzerland wins that war without any problem at all. And I continue on my little rampage in Africa bits here. Though I think at this point I kind of took a bit of a break from that expanding to deal with other stuff, I guess, maybe. Hmm. Because it did take me a while to continue at this point. Considering I do also have that over there in Australia now as a result of that stuff. So I kind of cleaned things up a bit over here in Australia. I guess at some point Sweden also took that stuff there. Didn't really notice when that happened, but yeah, that happens there. Um, I think, yeah. Finishing that stuff up over here, getting all that cleaned up. And yeah. Australia's finished being cleaned up there. So, yeah. East India Company and Russia tore with each other again. Of course, Russia's going to end up winning. I'm starting my little rampage in Africa once again at this point. That's country being the next target. The largest country in Africa. And the United States went and took over the Philippines. Got that stuff. Takes a bit before I get around to finishing all that stuff off. Necessarily, I get around to colonize all that stuff there first. Before I get around to finishing those countries off. And of course, Russia finally finished that war there. And honestly, at this point, Russia's kind of just unstable for the rest of the game, to be honest, because how much unrest and how low the happiness in their country is. So they just have constant rebellions across their country for pretty much the remainder of this game. So yeah, that's the thing going on over there. And I am finally getting around to finishing that stuff off. There we go. And just one final country down here. Basically what's left of the Philippines. And once that's done, it is time to finish off Africa, I guess. Also, oh, Russia took over that country at some points there and got the rest of Japan. There's some um, trade deals with Britain, getting that stuff there, and basically by exchanging it for that stuff, finish that country off there, get the rest of Africa under my control. And once I have the province built for that land done, I start cleaning up the Arabian Peninsula here, buying that land off of Russia and Switzerland. And there we go, got that stuff there done. So next up is Italy. Because I didn't really have an interest in going out to the United States yet. There's no way in hell I was going to be fighting a war Switzerland, considering a 200% defense bonus they have. And I didn't really care too much about Russia at this time, and also didn't really want to be fighting Britain, considering they're also really strong as well at this point. Though that's going to be changing soon, I think. But yeah, I kind of go and buy up that land from Italy first, because eh, it was kind of annoying the fact that they had that stuff up there in the first place. So once I kind of get things cleaned up over here, when it comes to borders, and basically just kick crush out of the area, buying all that land, exchanging stuff, at that point, I will then go to war with Italy over here. There we go. Italy put up a pretty good fight, in all honesty. 
And yeah, I got that there and southern India as a result of that, so once province ability is done, it'll be very easy to tell when that exactly that happens, considering I start buying up land off of Switzerland, cause gotta get land off of them somehow. Considering there's no way I'm fighting a war with them until the very end of the game. So yeah. Cleaning up that stuff and after down there in India a bit. And there we go. Buying land off of Switzerland over here. Getting southern France under my control. In which I end up using all that lands there to recruit a massive army for my war with the United States that I'm going to be doing next. But before I end up fighting that war over there, I end up buying most of the Balkans over here, basically. Starting with Greece and working up along the coast over here. And then just before the war with the United States, I basically get the rest of Bulgaria over there. And yeah, Switzerland and Britain are at war with each other at this point. Switzerland's of course going to win that war. But um, yeah, actually, I think that's the first war that they had between each other here. So this war actually ends in a draw, I think, because it just went on so long they decided to get a white piece, I guess. Despite there being so many casualties, but yeah. Fought the United States at that point, so they put up a pretty good fight in all honesty. But with that done, I of course gotta deal with province ability for that, and then kind of starts preparing for the next war, which is going to be against Britain. Though I think Switzerland fights another war with Britain by the time I can actually get around to doing that. But yeah, of course it takes quite a while to get province ability for all that land done. And Switzerland started that invasion over here in Canada. And over here in Britain currency got England independent, Scotland independent, Wales independent, and Cornwall independent. They're not isn't much united about the United Kingdom currently. But they do get around to dealing with Switzerland, um, Scotland, and England eventually. They already deal, dealt with Scotland up there, and they're soon going to be dealing with England, I guess. But yeah, bit amusing that Britain had all those billions that succeeded with a single province. There wasn't much left that was actually united about them. But yeah, I end up having them take over what Wells and Cornwall before I start that war with Britain there. And yeah, that war between Switzerland and Britain there was, did end the, in the white peace basically. And they're at war with each other again. And on all honesty, I don't think Switzerland really took all that much. They got Norway up here, a little sliver of land. In Ireland and a single province in Australia for some reason. But yeah, I started buying up land over here at this point, considering Russia had finally started getting the happiness up to reasonable levels and stuff. And I decided to basically finish the job in all those provinces that are still had low happiness and stuff. But yeah, that's the map done basically there, so now it is time for a war with Britain. Most of the fighting of course in Canada and Australia to start off with. And then invasion of Britain basically ends it very quickly. Yeah, and I also went and bought the bit of land Australia, um, Switzerland had in Ireland there as well. So all that is left now is Switzerland and Russia. And of course, Russia is the next target because there's no way I'm fighting Switzerland. With that 200% defense bonus, that's completely ridiculous. But yeah, it takes a while before I get around to actually fighting Russia here, I think. Considering they have decent law-sized army. 
like 20 million troops and I decided to just go in crazy with recruiting troops and with 100 million by the time I was done recruiting because I was going to need those troops to fight Switzerland afterwards anyways. But yeah, war with Russia basically will start shortly after I end up buying a bit more land over here in the Caucasus from Switzerland so I can attack over here in Russia. Not that this war actually lasts very long. Yeah, they capitulate in just a few turns basically. Generally do not expect them to capitulate that quickly to be honest, but they did. And now I guess time to just fast forward through the rest of this until I start doing something about Switzerland I guess. Because yeah that took quite a while to get all that province building done for all that land that Russia had. Okay, so I have started dealing with Switzerland here, buying up land here. Honestly, I'm not exactly sure if Switzerland is actually still in first place at this point, but they, of course, did eventually end up losing that around this point when I started just taking tons of land off of them and just slowly chomping away at them, considering I think when I started doing this, Switzerland had 200 million troops. By the time I'm done dealing with this stuff, they had 300 million troops at least. Considering I couldn't exactly see how many troops they had by when I got done with this, considering bugs. But yeah, slowly eating away at their country here, taking more and more stuff. The larger Switzerland's army gets the less land I'll allow them to have in the end, basically. I think it's also around this point when I actually officially had a larger population than Switzerland did. Just to give you an idea just how large Switzerland's population is. I have basically the entire world under my control and they had a larger population than me up until I started basically taking more of this stuff over here in Russia. Yeah. Okay, so this is here is more or less where I was originally planning to stop when it comes to taking lands, but because of how large Switzerland's army ends up being, I continued on at this point here and reduced him to very little land and all, honestly. Yeah. Considering all that I really have left for population is over here in northern France, and yeah, I go and take all that as well. And once this is done, they don't even have, only have like 80 million population at that point. Yeah. They have 80 million population right now, and over 300 million troops. At this point, I basically just went crazy recruiting troops myself, considering I can't exactly finish Switzerland off by doing trade deals. I have to eventually fight a war with them, so I decided to just leave them with that there and deal with them and we'll finish it off with finish them off there. But yeah, recruiting troops takes absolutely forever in this game, especially when you gotta do hundreds of millions. So yeah, I eventually ended up getting to 350 million troops and had to do scummy tactics considering I think this was my third attempt at this war here at doing some save scumming basically to get stuff done and to basically do multiple attacks over here near the coastline for the most part to try and drag their entire army over in that direction so the rest of their country would be open up so I could just go in and just attack it all and get them to capitulate. And of course, had to create a vassal around the entire border there to, to prevent Switzerland from actually being able to attack me. But yeah, that's the kind of scummy stuff you gotta deal with do when you fight a country that has a 200% defense bonus. So yeah. 
That's the earliest into the timeline. Pretty sure that's basically the longest game I've ever ha had in this game. Negative population because of how large it actually is. Or you somebody can't actually tell how large Switzerland's army army how large Switzerland's army at the end of the game there was. Cause couldn't see population anymore there. But um yeah. That's there is the end of this video here, I guess. Gotta figure out what to do for the next series, which I honestly not exactly sure yet for about stats yet. But yeah, that there is the end of this video. I hope you've all enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.